As we cross to Canberra from our Flow News 24 team, it's made up of John, Roger and of course Hannah and we're joined by Hannah right now. Hannah, how are you today? I'm going well, Clayton. It's been another big week here in Canberra, lots happening. Uh, I must say that I, I did actually have to think about all the things that happened this week because it feels like Monday was so far away. It was, and so much has happened, and I've got a list of things to tick off here. So firstly, um, what's been going on? There's been a call for an inquiry with relation to the Christian Porter matter, so what's the latest on that? Yeah, the call for inquiry has been a really big thing that's come from Anthony Albanese. I know Penny Wong's also sort of stepped in there and said that she would like an inquiry as well, and there's been a lot of people across the left who really would like an inquiry. Um, Morrison has actually often said, no, we're not going to go that way. But really interestingly, Christian Porter has engaged Brett Walker for a defamation case. He's one of the top uh, lawyers, defamation lawyers in Australia. And it's really interesting to see the ABC has also secured Justin Gleeson. He's, uh, he's very, very good as well. So there's going to obviously be something that plays out in our court system, which is obviously where Christian Porter would like to see it played out. And I think yeah. that we have the court of public opinion, and I don't think that's a very accurate court to play these matters out in. So the fact that uh, the, the people have been calling for an inquiry, this is probably going to solve that problem because when people have to go to court, they have to give their testimony. They have to actually put forward their case and the information that they have to be able to make the accusations that they have. And the case against the ABC is a defamation case uh, in which there was an article in, written in February which talked about uh, alleged assault that took place and they basically uh, made some defaming remarks about Christian Porter. He wasn't mentioned by name in that, but they did talk about a cabinet minister that really did actually lessen the pool of people it could have been, which meant that Christian Porter did have to actually come out to the, to the media and actually say that he was the one who'd been accused of these allegations. So that's a sort of the wrap up there on where that matter yep. is, but it does mean there is some sort of inquiry per se that will be happening in relation to that matter. And they say in the court of a public opinion that if you weigh the same as a duck, you must be a witch. So there you go. That's what it does. <laughs> um, now, Hannah, yes. did you get along to the rally that was earlier in the week? No, look, I didn't attend the rally. I decided I would watch very safely from a distance. I wasn't exactly sure how this was going to play out. I was very concerned. I think the issues at hand are very serious. The reality is that women do need to be safe in Australia. They need to be safe in Australian politics. Women need to be safe in their workplaces. But I was very concerned about where the issues were going to head in relation to this rally. And it did sort of become, in the end, a bit of a partisan thing, where the organisers of the rally actually refused to meet with the Prime Minister. He actually offered them a meeting, and I thought that was very, you know, a very good thing to do, not in front of the cameras. They really wanted, I think, the the, uh, the publicity in front of the cameras, but uh, the uh, Prime Minister decided not to do that, but they refused to meet with him. But it's a really sad state, the way politics is moving here in Australia, especially when you start talking about Nicole Flint, and that sort of come on the back of this. We saw that she made a speech in Parliament and it was one that's quite concerning because it talks about the uh, consistent attacks on her, the um, the vicious attacks on her being a woman, the get-up calls that came from her office that she was stalked. Uh, we do know that her office was trashed. It's really quite concerning. She actually said uh, when she had an interview with Peter Credlin on Sky News that everyone should be safe in politics and especially women. I, I wonder where this actually ends for women in politics because it really is a worrying time. Uh, I must say, when you look at the landscape right now, you really wouldn't want to join a political party because yeah. as a woman, you sort of think, well, what am I going to be subjected to? Well, I, and for my personal opinion on this, I, I look at you, Hannah, and I'll use you as my example. I see you as someone that is... You, you're a knowledgeable woman. You've got some great opinions, some, but they're thought-out opinions... And if you said to me you wanted to get into to politics and you wanted to be a part of the Liberal Party, I would support you all the way because I, I encourage people to do that. But I would also be very terrified for you about all the what's going to come back at you because your opinions, you look at facts and you like to get people to look, well, this is based on facts. This is not just some sort of pipe dream fantasy that I'm putting forward. This is we're, we're thinking about this in a logical, reasonable way. And that seems to me to be getting, get totally lost in all this. So for that, I feel really sad. I'm disappointed that 
someone like Nicole Flynn, I don't know her personally, but any woman that's getting into politics, I want to see it because you're half the population in some cases, you're more than half and you need to be out there and if we don't have you there, we're not going to hear your voice, we're not going to get your issues in our face to know what to do about them. So that's where I have a problem with it all. Yeah, and I can understand that, Clayton. It's, it's, a, it's a true issue when the facts sort of get deleted by um, the sexist comments or uh, yeah. whatever comments that have come towards Nicole Flint. And Nicole Flint is a conservative, and so Get Up has definitely launched some sort of campaign. They deny that. I Look, I'm not sure that's the case. I know that anyone who has conservative viewpoints, especially if they're female, um, is probably going to get some flack for those viewpoints from those who are on the um, on the other side of politics. So I, I do wonder where it goes for Nicole Flint here. I feel yeah. very sorry for her. She's worked very hard. Um, and the seat of Boothby is a very tough seat to be in. Um, and contesting another election there is going to be hard work. Um, and I do actually think that we do need to consider how much work is involved. If we want to put women into political positions and you want to keep them there, we may need to look at seats that may be just a little bit safer so that they feel like they actually have an opportunity to stay. Exactly right. And what's going on with AstraZeneca? Uh, I'm getting quite confused by this. Do I get jabbed? Do I not get jabbed? I, I really don't know. To me, this seems more about of a marketing exercise than a real health exercise. You know, you may have hit the nail on the head there, Clayton. I'm a little bit concerned myself. But as I go through the data, and it's something that we are really looking at closely here in terms of the research behind this before we put pen to paper in terms of an article for Flow News 24, uh, you know, I've been watching very closely that we've seen 17 countries uh, in Europe that are still actually not vaccinating with AstraZeneca because they're worried about blood clots. AstraZeneca has come yeah. out and said, no, it's not the case, everything's fine. Those countries are still sitting on the shelf. When it comes to Australia, we have been very clear that AstraZeneca is a safe vaccination to use um, and that you should be getting vaccinated. Um, our health minister has come out very strongly in support of it, saying the vaccine's fine. I do wonder, Clayton, like you said just before, is this, uh, is this more of a political exercise, though? You know, I know in Australia, yeah. you and I spoke briefly off air about Garibaldi. It's a case that people might not remember. It was about salami. Yeah. Um, and, and we saw young people and um, a young child, I think, passed away from the salami outbreak back in the 90s. And um, it, was, it, uh, it was bad salami people ate and people wouldn't touch those products. So I think in Australia, once we're, you know, once we're bitten, we're twice shy yeah. when it comes to these sorts of things. So I do wonder if pulling AstraZeneca could actually um, stop the vaccination program here in Australia if there were any concerns. I do know that there has been some concerns that have come up in Queensland, where people did actually have some adverse allergic reactions. I think it was an anaphylactic reaction that did occur there. And I believe there were four of them that took place. And that is a 15-minute observation time after you have been jabbed with AstraZeneca. But according to the health department, according to our health minister, Greg Hunt, the vaccination is safe and effective and does work, and there is no issue. I'm still going to wait and bide my time, to be quite honest, but we'll just move on from there. Uh, did you manage to get your selfie with Micmac? I did get a selfie hey. with him, so I do have one with Michael McCormack. I will organise for that to be sent in to the station. Look, I was attending the Regional Australia Institute. It was a very interesting Regions Rising conference, basically talking, Clayton, about the regions, yeah. everything that we cover, everything that we are about. We are all regional people. Uh, I'm a bit of an expat, I feel like, from the regions, and I've uh, moved into... Uh, the, the region of Canberra, we'll say, uh, to do this job. But I must say that uh, you sat at that conference and I was very aware of just how many issues we do have in regional Australia, but how great regional Australia is. Did you manage to try some regional food? Look, no, they didn't have any regional food. They did have very good uh, pies and pasties and sausage oh. rolls, which I really felt like was a very regional or, you know, a country thing to have. There were jam and cream and scones, so I really do think I was at a country women's association yep. for a few moments there. Uh, but I must say, we should talk about the policies and the politics that did come out of it. We do know that Michael McCormack did attend. He uh, spoke at the, as an opening keynote speaker, uh, and then he spoke at the gala dinner uh, the night on that night as yep. well. Uh, he didn't have much to say. He was much more just encouraging people uh, into the regions and saying how good regional Australia is and betting on regional Australia is something for our future. We know that the National Farmers Federation has come out and said they want that 2030 target of a hundred um, of a hundred billion dollars. At the moment, we're sitting at about 83 billion. 
at 2030. So where they come up with the other 17 billion, who knows where. But mm. the reality yeah. is that Australia is a, a growing place regionally. Right now, I don't know if you knew this one, Clayton, there are 54,000 jobs in regional Australia that aren't filled. Oh, I didn't know that. That's good to know. Yeah. So there you go. So that, that does mean that regional Australia is hungry for people to move out to our regions. But obviously, in moving out to our regions, there are some big issues. Yeah. One of them, namely, has to be housing. Where do you put people once they move out to regional Australia? How do they actually live in regional Australia if they have nowhere to live? And that's sort of one of the things that has come up quite significantly as a problem that does need to be resolved for people to move into regional Australia. The other big one that sort of came out of the conference was healthcare, and it's something that you and I are very, very cautious and aware of and we're very worried about yep. in regional Australia. Uh, we've both seen it firsthand in different aspects of our lives. I, did, um, I worked in the health system, and so I've seen um, how important regional healthcare really is. And the reality is that people who move to regional Australia will actually have a shorter lifespan. There are, in, there are some areas in regional Australia where intermortality is twice that of its city counterpart. So, it, you know, that, they are some scary statistics about regions because of the lack of healthcare services that we have available to us. And this is not the slight on regions of the say that regional Australia is a good place to live. This is some of the facts of things that you actually know in the bush yeah. and how we deal with them. We kind of know if you need help, you may need to go down to the city to get that sort of help from a hospital. Um, but I understand that a lot of people moving out to regions are concerned about that. But on the positives, I do want to just cover them quickly, Clayton. Yep. Um, the positives here are that COVID-19 did something pretty amazing. If, believe it or not, there are some highlights and there are some silver linings in the COVID-19. It actually allowed for people to readjust how they worked. We all did, didn't we, Clayton? We certainly did, yeah. Got used to it after a while and working on my own and then suddenly all you people started to get around me again. <laughs> it was so nice. We had the office to yourself. But when it comes to people moving to regional Australia now, there is this thing called Zoom. There are yeah. these uh, things called emails and you can have lots of computer programs that allow you to work remotely and not in office. And what we saw was a mass exodus, especially from Victoria. A lot of people were leaving the Great Migration out of Victoria because of some of the issues and moving into regional Australia because you can now actually live in regional Australia and do your job and end up back in the office. You know, in a, a, on a four, you know, every four weeks you go back to the office once and maybe do a few days in office. So there are some changes that are really coming down the pipeline, especially about how people work. And this is changes across the board. So that was a really big thing that did come out of it, that we're never going to go back to the way it was. There will now be flexible yeah. working out. There will now be people who work from home. That is the reality of how society is now moving. So I think that's really good news in a sense that regional Australia will now be able to see lots of people coming in who are probably earning really significant wages contributing into the community. When you start thinking about economic growth in our regions, if you've got people who are actually earning an income outside the region, they're actually spending money inside the region. That's going to be excellent for economic growth. We love our regions. We're a part of it. And, yeah, that's what we want to see. We want to see the people come here. But those conditions, housing and health, they are two big ones that uh, need to be looked at and addressed. And it's, from my perspective, it's more about the equipment that gets used, not the people. The The people that I've dealt with have been absolutely fantastic. But some of the mm -hmm. equipment just needs to be upgraded. Uh, yeah, when, when, yeah, just... We won't go there. Well, I'll stop myself yeah, from going there. I was about to go there, but I will not. I'll pull back on that one. Because, yes, I know. Yeah. Look, health is one of those issues, Brayton, that we could talk about all day long. And when it comes to equipment, the reason why we have equipment that isn't actually, you know, up to scratch or up to snuff in regional Australia is because we don't have the, um, I guess you don't have the amount of people coming through regional Australia yeah. needing that equipment. So therefore, it's one of those things that gets put back on the back burner that needs to be, you know, recalibrated or fixed in the future. So, uh, you know, I think if we get more people into regional Australia, that improves the services as well because more population, more people will yeah. be needing those services as well. And better gizmos and gadgets. We love it. All right, Han, I will leave you with it. Uh, thank you very much. We'll get more on this on flownews24.com.au. There's also the podcast and we can hear everything that we talk about. And uh, you have a wonderful weekend. I look forward to chatting to you again for another big week next week. Thanks very much, Clayton.